Before we talk about additional isomers, we need to explain what chirality is. Chiral molecules are molecules that are non-superimposable on their mirror images. Non-superimposable means if you stack the two molecules on top of each other, they don't perfectly match. So we have an example over here if you take a look at these two molecules. These two molecules are mirror images. And you can tell they are mirror images when you look at this plane, right? Everything matches if you were to, to look at both sides of this plane. Now, these two molecules are chiral because they contain chiral centers. Not all chiral molecules have to have chiral centers, but on the MCAT, usually chiral molecules will have chiral centers. Chiral centers are sp3 hybridized atoms bound to four different substituents. The fact that they are sp3 hybridized means that they have a tetrahedral electronic geometry, which we can see in both of these molecules right here. Now, to better illustrate what I mean by the fact that these molecules are non-superimposable, let's try to stack these two molecules on top of each other. Now, of course, just putting one on top of the other, they're definitely not going to match just because you can see all the atoms are in different positions. But let's say I try to take one of these isomers and I try to flip it 180 degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this by 180 degrees. If I go ahead and do that, then I can draw the same molecule, but now I'm going to have the hydrogen and the chlorine both facing the left side like it's mirror image. However, when you flip the molecule, what you're going to observe is that the substituent coming out of the page towards us is the deuterium, and going into the page is the methyl group. So now, even though the hydrogen and the chlorine stack on each other, the deuterium and the methyl groups will not, demonstrating that these two molecules are chiral because they are non-superimposable. Okay. So now that we have a better understanding of what chiral molecules are, I want to talk more about chiral centers because this is a topic that the MCAT likes to test. The first thing you should know is that chiral centers are not always super obvious. So what I mean by that is we can take a look at a couple examples here and try to identify chiral centers. In this first molecule over here, there are two chiral centers. And the two chiral centers are this atom right here. It's bound to four different substituents. There's a hydrogen that's not drawn in. That hydrogen is the fourth substituent. The same is true for this carbon. It's also bound to four different substituents. So I can say that this molecule has two chiral centers. And that didn't seem so bad, right? That you can just take a look and say, oh, hey, it's bound to four different substituents. And what helps is that often when you're looking at these structures, you can look for atoms with wedges and dashes, right? Those are often going to be chiral centers. However, let's take a look at this molecule right here. If we're looking for wedges and dashes, we can quickly find this atom right here, which indeed is a chiral center, right? It's bound to a hydrogen, a methyl group, and two different parts of this uh, organic molecule. Now, this is not the only chiral center though. There are actually additional chiral centers at this atom as well as this atom. All right, so you have to watch out for these situations. Again, you're not just looking for wedges and dashes, you're looking for sp3 hybridized atoms bound to four different substituents. So in this case, we can see that this molecule has three chiral centers. Now, identifying chiral centers is important because it can help you answer another type of MCAT question, which is how many possible stereoisomers are there for this molecule? There is an equation for this. The number of possible stereoisomers, the number of possible stereoisomers is equal to 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of chiral centers. 
So for instance, if we take a look at this molecule on the top, it has two chiral centers. And two to the power of two is four, which means this molecule has four possible stereoisomers. And in this case, it does have four. We're gonna talk about absolute configuration later, but this molecule, it's four possible stereoisomers are RR, SS, RS, and SR. That's four possible combinations. In this case, since we have three chiral centers, then we have two to the power of three, or eight possible stereoisomers. One important thing to note is that this is only the possible number of stereoisomers. It doesn't guarantee that there will indeed be that many stereoisomers. For some molecules where some of the stereoisomers have planes of symmetry, you won't get that maximum number. So again, that's why it's only the possible number of stereoisomers.